Hi, and welcome back. In our last video, we had a look at the 4MS Stereo Triggered Sampler and a couple of fun melodic things you can do with sample players. So make sure to check out that video as well. Today though, we're going to turn our sample player into a drum machine with the help of a sequencer and go over a couple of interesting ways to create percussive sounds. If you get value out of these videos, consider a like and subscribe. And have a look at my Patreon if you're interested in reading more about my plans and support this video series. But now, let's dive right in. By combining a sample player with a sequencer, you can create powerful drum loops and patterns. Before we get to the fun stuff though, I have to explain a little technical detail. When you're using a sequencer to manipulate a sampler, you have to make sure the CV output of the sequencer matches the required inputs of the sampler. The 4MS, which I'm using, only responds to voltages between 0 and 5 volt. So, if you send a sequence to a CV input of the 4MS and want to have an easy access to the full range, you need a sequencer that sends voltages between 0 and 5 volt. The Korg SQ1 has that exact range. But, if you have a sequencer that sends less than 5 volt, you can use a buffered multiple and a mixer or an amplification module that can handle CV to increase the range. And if you use a modular sequencer that outputs more, 0 to 10 volt for example, all you need to do is run the entire sequence through an attenuator so the maximum range is limited to 5 volt. When you match your sequence's output with the voltage required by your sample player's input, you can start sequencing drums. My favorite trick is to use the sequencer to create drum patterns. We can do this by using the sequencer's CV output to the sample select input. So we can pick a specific drum sample for each step and the trigger out to the sample play input to trigger the sample. In my sample player, I prepared several banks with 10 single drum hits, from kicks to hats to snares, like these. Make sure the levels are balanced when you make them, the better the samples sound as a cohesive kit, the better the results. The way they are arranged is also important. When a sequencer is connected to the sample select input, each of the 10 samples is selectable by dialing in the step's voltage exactly right. That can be a little tricky, especially when performing live. However, there are two positions always easy to find, and those are fully clockwise and fully counterclockwise. These respond to 0 and 5 fold, or in other words, the first and last sample within a bank. So, in a bank with more real drums, I often put my favorite kick and snare on the first and last sample. And for more techno-oriented kids, I could use the main kick and hat. This way, even in live situations, it's very easy to program the main rhythm. With the main pattern ready, we can fiddle around with the steps in between to flesh out a full drum pattern. So now we have just one sample player creating a full beat and we can use the sample player's controls to shape the sound. The playback length can turn a full hit into a short transient, the start position can cut the harder transients off, or even silence the samples if they're long enough, and the playback speed and reverse can be used to create nice effects as well. Here, I'm just messing around with the controls on the 4MS to shape the sound. But of course, you can also use some or a lot of modulation from your modular to automate the parameters. Add a subtle LFO to the sample length for some variation over time. And one of my favorite tricks is to use a mixer to mix the output of the sequencer with a random voltage. This way, at any time you can add a little bit of random to your program sequence, keeping even a simple 8-step sequence interesting for a longer time. And of course, you don't have to use samples from an entire kit. You can make a bank with 10 slightly different but matching head sounds to create dynamic heads, or a bank with obscure modular percussive sounds, or different metallic hits to create an interesting percussive pattern.
When it comes to variations in rhythmical patterns, a lot depends on the power of the sequencer you're using. The Gorgon example has the possibility to select whether a gate is on and off for each of its steps. This is a nice way to build up a pattern, like we did before. It also has the possibility to select which steps are active, and that can lead to nice short patterns and polyrhythms. A lot of modular sequencers can have even more power. Modules like the Make Noise René or Intelligent Metropolis can turn your drums into a more playable part, or add interesting things like beat repeats or ratcheting steps. A nice thing with a digital sequencer like a BeatStep Pro is that you can store and recall sequences, so you can switch between patterns while performing. I made a video with tips about the BeatStep Pro, so make sure to have a look at that as well. Finally, more is just more in this case. I picked the 4MS because of its great direct control and CV inputs, but also because it works great as two independent mono sample players. And the Quark SQ1 can be used as two independent sequencers, so I basically have a two-voice drum computer. I can use one half to put down a steady kick and head sound for example, and the other half to throw in a snare and some details. So sequencing single drum hits with a sample player and a sequencer is a great way to create entire drum patterns. But of course, the combo can be used for other percussive tricks as well. Beside the sample select input, you can use a sequencer to grade effect on other inputs. For example, just trigger a single long hi-hat sound, but use the sequencer to program the sample length to create more dynamic sounds. You can even use the second sequencer of the cork on another input, like the pitch or the second gate output to have certain steps reversed. This also works great with polyrhythms for longer variations. And you can also use a sequencer to the one volt per octave input for melodic percussive sounds. This works great with tuned metallic hits for example, but also with 808 style percussive bass. For more experimental sounds, sequencing the start position of a longer field recording is a lot of fun. For this, you need samples that have a good amount of random sounds. By triggering the play input in a nice pattern, and then dialing in the sequencer to find nice parts, you can create semi-tempo synced percussive loops. And it's also worth it to mess around with entire drum loops. I perform tracks where I use the BeatStep Pro with a steady BPM and the clock divider to trigger a bank with entire pre-recorded drum loops, and manually select the sample needed for different parts of the track. But it's also great to make a bank with random drum loops. You can use a sequencer to select between different loops, or to sequence the start position within the loop for each step. Messing around with the playback speed, or using a trigger sequencer to not trigger every step, can create interesting patterns with some slightly out of sync elements. And again, remember you have other modules available to create extra dynamics. You can use an LFO to modulate a parameter that you're not sequencing, use an occasional random trigger to play a sample in reverse, and so on. Finally, I like to mention a few tricks that are great for creating sounds or making new samples. Noisy field recordings, nature sounds like wind, waterfalls or non-static radio noise are a great source for dynamic hats. Just loop the sample, run it through a VCA and use a short percussive envelope to open that VCA. If you use an envelope with CV control over the decay, you can modulate it with a bit of random voltage. I also like to run such samples through effect modules and then cut them up. One of my favorites is the clouds as it can do everything itself. Here is a noisy sample through the clouds set to play short grains, triggered by a 16 step clock. And with some modulation to the texture, which is the internal envelope. 
it's also worth it to record longer static oscillator sounds, make variations with folders and distortions, and modify them. For example, by stacking them in the DAW to create custom packs of heavy drones. When you play these from your sample player, they can be used to create new percussive sounds by running them through a VCA or even a filter with a short envelope. Try adding extra dynamics by running that same or a similar envelope through an attenuator to the 1V per octave input of the sampler. Just experiment with your modular to see what percussive sounds you can come up with, to create percussive sample banks so you can play them back and mangle them with your sampler. Final tip with the 4MS is that it can actually record samples, so you can use the two players to create interesting sounds or loops, modify and mangle them with your modular, and then record them back into the sampler to make new sounds you can mess around with. If you enjoyed this, subscribe for more content. But that's it for now, thanks for watching, and see you next time.